Now, books usually start by finding the gradient field of functions of two or more variables. But we're going to go back to what we know and see if we can relate the gradient field to things we already know very well. So we're going to find the gradient field of the scalar, that is the real valued function, of one variable, y equals x plus 2 times sine of x. And we're going to find the vector values of this field at the point a equal 2, that's x equal to 2, it's like a point with one coordinate, and b equal 3, x equal to 3, and we're going to see if we can conclude anything about the function between x equal to 2 and x equal to 3, that is, between these two points. And then we're going to prove our conclusion using standard calculus, which we know very well. Let's get going here, our solution. First thing is that this is not written in the format that we were using for the gradient. The format says that we will write y as f of x, so we can see that it's one variable, equals x plus 2 times sine of x. And then we saw that the definition of the gradient of f, or del f, is vector, and then it was the partial derivative of f with respect to x, full stop, because we only have the one. So this would not be the partial, it would be the actual derivative of f with respect to x, or if we write it in standard vector format, it would be df dx times i. So that's what we're looking at here. That's going to be our gradient field. So we need to find df dx, which is of course just the variable. So df dx equals y prime equals 1 plus 2 times cosine of x. So this means that del of f is equal to 1 plus 2 times cosine of x, all of that times i. That's what we have. That's the answer to the first part of the problem. Find the gradient field of that function. Now we're to find the vector values of this field at these two points. So we're interested in delta f at the point A, which would be 1 plus 2 times cosine, and x was 2, so we put a 2 in here, times i. Let's get a calculator for that. And remember, this is has no degree sign, so we need radians here. Radians, so 2, and then cosine, and then times 2 plus 1 equals. And we'll round to three decimal places, so 0 0.168 equals 0 0.168i. So that's our vector at a. Our vector at the point x equal to 2 is this. And then we have delta f at b is equal to 1 plus 2 times cosine of 3i equals, get our calculator, and we're still in radians, 3 cosine times 2 plus 1 equals minus 0 0.9, and this will be 80, so minus 0 0.980, minus 0 0.980i. Now these are both vectors on the x-axis, vectors on x-axis, right, in one dimension, one dimension. Here is the x-axis, here's A equal to 2 and B equal to 3. So let's draw this first vector, it's point 2, about point 2i. This is the midpoint, so that means we're going to go point 1 in the positive direction. And then we just go back that same amount. So this is our first vector here. And then this one is minus 1 almost. 
So that means we're going to go 0.5 to the left and then back this way, but the arrow points to the left. And this is our second vector here. So these are the two vectors that we were told to find and we have drawn them. And what do we notice about them? This one is pointing this direction and this one is pointing this direction. So they're pointing in opposite directions. And what did we say about gradient fields? They point in the direction of growth. So at the point A equal to 2, the function is growing. And at the point B equal to 3, the function is decreasing. So what's happened between these two babies is we have a maximum. And probably the maximum is closer to 2 than it is to 3 since this magnitude is bigger. So it's falling down faster by the time it gets to 3 than it was growing at a equal to 2. Because this function is defined on all values, here it's increasing and here it's decreasing, there must be a max. So now we're going to prove that conclusion using standard calculus. So remember that we're looking for a max um, where x is between 2 and 3. 2 and 3. So how would we find the max according to standard calculus? So y prime is 1 plus 2 times cosine of x. We're looking for extreme values. We set it equal to 0. So we would say y prime equals 0 implies that 1 plus 2 times cosine of x equals 0. And from here we can see that that means that cosine of x must be minus 1 over 2, minus 1 over 2. And if you don't remember your tables, we can use a calculator. So we go and get a calculator. We're looking at 0 0.5 plus minus and inverse cosinus, cosine. And what do we get? Exactly what we need, 2.09. But let's assume that we're going to get a little bit more than that. So we get x equals 2.09. For those of you who want to know what that is, that is 2 pi over 3. And the other possible values are 4 pi over 3, and all of these plus 2k pi, of course. But we're looking for this one. We haven't yet seen that it's a max. All we've done is seen that it's a stationary point. How do we see that it's a max? We take the second derivative, which would be minus 2 sine of x. So now we want to know how much oh, we, we need the sine of y of 2.09 which is minus 2 sine of 2.09. Let's see what it is. So the sine of this, it's positive times that minus 2. So it's less than 0. So indeed, uh, the function y equal to x plus 2 sine of x has a maximum, right, at x equal 2.09. So that was using standard calculus. We proved what we found from the gradient field. Now let's see the whole gradient field of this function. So here we have a little applet that will give us the one-dimensional gradient field of a real valued function of one variable. Here we've set it up already to be our function, f of x equal to x plus 2 sine of x. Uh, the visible field is from x equal to 0 to x equal to 12. So that's what we set our minimum and our maximum. And momentarily, our vector is scaled at v equal to 1. So that's scaled at the actual magnitude. Over here, we have a spreadsheet with x values from 0 to 12 at a step of 1. And over here we have the value of the derivative, or actually the 
part that was in front of I um, on the gradient. So where's the two that we worked on? Here we have x equal to 2, 0 0.17. That's the one we worked on for a point A. And then x equal to 3, minus 0 0.98. That's the one we worked on for point B. So these are the two that we worked on on our worksheet. Notice that I judiciously chose them to have magnitude less than 1, the distance between these two points, so that when I was drawing them, I did not have to worry about vector scale. However, notice that this one right here at x equal to 0 has magnitude 3, so it's going to overlap over this point. Let's see how that looks. So let's draw the one-dimensional gradient field with v equal to 1, and we can see that the vectors overlap each other. Where's the 2 that we had? Here's the one at 2. It's the right-hand one of those little 2. And here's the one at 3 that we had. And they're pointing at each other, and we found that maximum, right, in this region. But we cannot really tell what's happening here. So what do we do? We scale down the vectors. And since this one has a magnitude of 3, and our step is 1, we better scale them at least to 1 third. So notice that the vectors are starting to separate. And we'll go to 1 third. And now we can see each vector separately. If we were given this vector field, we would have to find the value of one of these to be able to find that vector scale here. We'll see this in a little bit again. If we use these as our actual magnitudes, our function would be smooshed along the y-axis by one-third. We, we, but we know what we're doing here, so it's better than that. So here are the function points. And so how would we do this? We would say, let's look at the length of this and say, oh, it looks like about two-thirds. Our vector scale is one-third, so two-thirds divided by one-third would be two. That's this two right over here that you see. And so I need a little piece of segment with slope two here. Then I need a little piece of segment the same length with slope 0, 1, 7 here. And then I need a little piece of segment here with slope minus one. Looks like one third, but when I divide it by that one third, I get minus one. So let's look at that. So those are those slope fields that you, that you make when you're working with differential equations. But what they're actually doing is reading off the magnitudes and the direction. They're reading them off using the vector scale, though, to draw the slope of the little line segments. And now here we have our function. There's our maximum right there between 2 and 3. Here's our minimum right here between 4 and 5, where the arrows are pointing away from each other. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got these two pointing at each other, so there should be a maximum. And we have these two pointing away from each other, so there should be a minimum. Let's zoom out. Ah, there they are. Where were they pointing towards each other? Hey, there's the maximum. Where were they pointing away from each other? Hey, there's the minimum. So that's how people use gradient fields. And of course, they're going to get more complex because we're going to go into two dimensions and into three dimensions. But see, this was a good way to see how gradient fields work on a function that we can understand completely.